Today, we will once again take a look at interesting footage that captures a moment. Ukrainian drones silently destroy Russian troops in Avdivka direction. The Special Operations Forces SSO, reported via telegram the destruction of two Russian tanks and the elimination of five Russian soldiers with the assistance of first-person view FPV, drones. The operation was carried out by FPV drone operators from the 8th Separate Regiment of the Special Ops. During the day, the Special Forces destroyed a T-90 tank, a T-72 tank, and two vehicles. The T-90 is a modern Russian main battle tank, with an export value of AT-90 going from about $2.50 to $4.3 million depending on the level of modernization. The price of a new T-72 tank ranges from $3-4 million, depending on the configuration, while an older Soviet T-72 can cost as low as half a million dollars. Additionally, five Russian soldiers were eliminated and three more were injured. A Russian dugout was also destroyed. Everything appearing on the horizon in the area of our unit's responsibility will become scrap and will be destroyed," said the commander of the SSO's Viking Group. Explosions and the destruction of Russian tanks and vehicles are depicted throughout the video, and the footage also shows Ukrainian drones targeting Russian soldiers directly, as well as their attempts to evade the strikes. Russian soldiers are seen moving through the trenches, apparently aware of Ukrainian drones, in an attempt to avoid strikes, but the video later showed Ukrainian drones hitting the Russian trenches, leading to the destruction of the dugout. Recently, Ukrainian special ops reportedly killed nine Russian soldiers along with an infantry fighting vehicle and an armored personnel carrier using FPV drones, and SSO fighters reportedly also decimated a Russian mortar position and five soldiers using FPV drones. Before that, Ukrainian special ops reported the destruction of a dozen Russian military vehicles in the Zaporizhia region. The operation led by an SSO unit inflicted significant damage on Russian equipment using FPV drones. The missions are part of a series of SSO successes using drones. In a single operation, one of its units eliminated 13 Russian soldiers and disabled six pieces of equipment, including two tanks, two infantry fighting vehicles, an armored fighting vehicle, and a TOS-1A 220mm Solnsepiak heavy flamethrower system, all used FPV drones. On the other hand, the Ukrainians turned the battlefield into a grim graveyard for the Russian occupiers during an intense five-hour firefight. Vladimir Putin's army lost millions of dollars worth of equipment in a catastrophic day for Russian forces. The Russians have gradually seized the battlefield initiative, as the Ukrainian army runs out of essential supplies of ammunition, in an attempt to exploit the advantage gifted to them by Trump Republicans, Putin's army has stepped up its attacks along the front line. Meanwhile, Chasiv Yar in Ukraine's Donetsk region has come under heavy Russian attack in the last few days, Russian armored units have repeatedly attempted to breach Ukrainian defensive lines. However, Zelensky's soldiers have successfully repelled the Russian onslaught, inflicting massive losses in personnel and equipment on the brutal invaders. During an intense five-hour firefight, the Ukrainians destroyed 20 armored Russian vehicles, turning the battlefield into a grim graveyard for the occupiers. Drone footage shows burning armored vehicles and disabled tanks littering a dirt road in the vicinity of the eastern city, and Ukraine's 82nd Air Assault Brigade also destroyed 12 Russian artillery pieces in further devastating attacks over the last two days. While in a post on its social media accounts, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense wrote, Nice pace, warriors, keep working. The 2,000-person 82nd Air Assault Brigade is stacked with Martyr and Striker fighting vehicles and Challenger 2 tanks, the brigade was deployed last year to the Zaporizhia region in southern Ukraine and helped spearhead the counteroffensive on that section of the front line. 
Trump Republicans are continuing to block the passage of a $60 billion military aid package for Ukraine. The political stalemate in Washington is playing straight into the hands of the Kremlin and inflicting unnecessary loss of life on both Ukrainian soldiers and civilians. Ukraine has repelled a battalion-sized mechanized assault on its eastern front, the first attack of such a scale in five months proving the resilience of its defenses, but raising concerns that Russia is becoming increasingly ambitious as it gears up for an expected major offensive. The attack on Sunday reportedly included three dozen tanks and a dozen infantry fighting vehicles, and struck near Tonanki, a village close to Abdivka, the city Russia overran on February 17 and has been inching westward from ever since. A Ukrainian serviceman reported that a third of the tanks and two-thirds of the infantry fighting vehicles were destroyed. We carried out combined fire, said a Russian trainer of Storm Z assault forces. On subsequent approaches, which lasted until lunchtime, the fire supply dwindled to sparse artillery fire and then significant losses began. Yet he noted that the last group of vehicles to enter the fray suffered no losses, possibly indicating that local Ukrainian defenses had been exhausted. I would venture to cautiously suggest that these regular visits could ultimately overload the enemy's strike capabilities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told The Washington Post's David Ignatius in an interview, we are trying to find some way not to retreat. If there is no US support, it means that we have no air defense, no Patriot missiles, no jammers for electronic warfare, number 155 mm artillery rounds, he said. While Europe was stepping in to cover some of the shortages, a Czech initiative had reportedly located a million artillery shells around the world which would start to be delivered to Ukraine this month, and France pledged hundreds of reconditioned armored personnel vehicles. However, Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sersky also told Ukrainform that Avdivka would not have fallen if deliveries of Western military aid had been more constant, and that the Ukrainian counteroffensive that reclaimed much of Kharkiv and Kherson in September 2022 would have been more sustained. <laughs>